Hello, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us today. Uh, my name is Katerina Constantinescu. I work as data scientist at the Data Lab and Innovation Center set up in Scotland. I'm also the organizer of the R user group in Edinburgh. Um, today, I'd like to share some work I've carried out recently um, for Data Tech, a conference we um, organized as part of Data Fest, a two week long festival of data science. Um, basically, what we were interested in doing was um, selecting a sample of the best submissions we got for this conference according to multifaceted Roche modeling. And um, as you can see, uh, the conference uh, happened just recently in March and featured three keynotes, such as. Nina Chetinkaya Rundell, Jared Lander, uh, Debbie Bard, as well as 19 additional speakers across a variety of formats. Uh, we received 44 submissions, just to go over the types of data that we received. Um, these were reviewed by six blind reviewers according to seven criteria, such as fit with the conference themes, coverage, and so on. With each of these criteria having a structure of five-point Likert scales, therefore implicitly including four steps of increasing difficulty, so getting from zero points to one, from one to two, and so on. So the problem we were facing with this data was how can we make sure we're selecting a sample of um, the best submissions, but while making sure that how harsh or lenient a rater is won't really affect this process to too high an extent. So the answer to this problem is pretty much Roche models, which include a variety of subtypes like the rating scale model for items with the same response choices throughout, as well as multifaceted Roche models, the ones used for this project, where the basic idea is that test performance is seen as a function of personability contrasted against item uh, difficulty and rater severity, each of these being a separate facet. The TAM package estimates these types of models and has a pleasingly simple syntax, if you can see. Um, and it's also really flexible in terms of fitting various types of models. So the one that actually fits the data best in terms of deviance here, as well as being quite parsimonious, is model number three, which specifies um, that we're allowing differential difficulties for the steps within a certain item, as well as rater effects to actually um, influence how these steps are used across the instrument that we designed for assessing the submissions. So in terms of the results and how this model fit, as you can see, the distribution of uh, person abilities is matched pretty well against how we calibrated the items with a few exceptions in terms of really difficult uh, steps according to some items or really easy ones. But overall, there is a decent match in between the two. Other types of information you get from these types of models are difficulty scores from the actual, uh, for the actual items. Interestingly enough, uh, the fit with the conference themes was the easiest one to tick off, whereas reproducibility relative to the rest was the hardest. The raters themselves also vary quite a lot in terms of how harsh or lenient they were, so the, it was a really good idea to take this into account. The steps within the models are order, uh, within the items are ordered as you would expect from one to four, but there is a lot of variation in terms of how the raters actually use them, which is what you can see in the fourth panel right there. Um, Something else to sanity check the data is so -called, uh, the so-called infit T value, where you basically um, generate a value that captures how much randomness is in these ratings or how erratic the behavior might be for the various raters. So this is always useful to have a look at in case you might want to, for instance, retrain the raters. And this is a mock output that you can get in terms of the submission quality according to the model. You get a hierarchy um, of submissions. You can basically select in this order if um, everything seems to check out in terms of infit T's and um, such issues. Uh, like any model, there are some key assumptions to look at. The main one that I'm probably going to mention is unidimensionality. The assumption of Roche models here is that they all, all the items measure the same thing. Now, this work can be extended, and that's what we're going to attempt to do for Data Tech 2020. Basically, we can add um, additional facets to these models, such as um, rater gender or rater background, sorry, submitter gender or submitter uh, background, so that we make sure that we're also calibrating our uh, procedure according to this. So if there's any really quick questions, I might try to answer really quickly. If not, you can always find me in the breaks. 
Well, hello everyone, my name is Marie Perdokes. Today we talk to you about a uh, NER package, which is called Varish, Var Varicel, <laughs> and we uh, perform um, linear uh, variable selection in multivariate linear model. But uh, my presentation has not started yet because it's the time. Yeah. So, to, so this is the hair package I will talk to you about. So I will uh, talk to you about this package through an example in immunology. So a naive vision of the immunology is that when perturbators arrive in our system, it will be detected by a dendritic cell. This dendritic cell <laughs> will send some signals in order to warn the, the warrior that there is a problem. So here you have the perturbation, then the dendritic cell Tick cell finds that there is a problem that sets some signal that are kept by the warriors, the Th lymphocytes, that will send some other signal in response in order to fight the perturbation. But in practice, in our experiment, we have two kinds of dendritic cells. We have the ODRA cells and the CETO cells. And for both, in each experiment, we measure the DC signal and the Th response. And the aim of the project is to link, to associate the DC signal and the Th response. To do that, we will do statistical modeling. So we have X, which is a design matrix containing all the value of the DC signal for both of the, of the dendritic cells, and Y, which is the response matrix containing the value of the TH responses. And to link the DC signal to the TH responses, we propose to perform variable selection in the multivariate linear model here. So here, B is a sparse coefficient matrix. And E is an error matrix. And our hypothesis is that each line of E are independent, but the colon are not. And we will want to take into account this covariance. I will not talk about this covariance here, but I will talk about the estimation of B. So we have several ways to estimate B. So we can use a, crit a lasso criterion just to select variable without taking into account any link between variable. We can use a group lasso to select a group of variable altogether or fuse lasso to influence two coefficients to be exactly the same, to have the same value. Uh, in, our, um, in our example, we can use group lasso to select a DC signal, an association between a DC signal and the TH response uh, for both um, the DC types. And the fuse lasso to influence this association to be the same for both of the DC types. So this is the main function of the package, trend variable. So we can give it Y, which is the response matrix. A uh, matrix of regressor, here it's, uh, it's have the value of the DC signal and group, which give for each line if it's a seto cell or a nodra cell. And the type, it is the type of model we want to do. Uh, at the bottom, it does exactly the same, but if we have X, which is already the design matrix complete. So here we choose to do a group uh, lasso model, so we select for each DC signal, the, uh, for each DC type, the same, uh, this is the same association between DC signal and TH response. So this is the result when we plot the regularization path. So each color corresponds to a link between a DC signal and the TH response. And the line type corresponds to whether this association is fine on the CETO cell or on the ODRA cells. So we can see that each color are selected all together. So this slide allows us to compare a bit some different models that we allowed in our, in our package. So at the top is fuse lasso that influence two coefficient to be exactly the same. And at the bottom is group lasso that select the variable all together. So we can see at the bottom right, it's the, it's the group lasso model which select one color for both C2 and all cell together. So one association for one DC signal to one TH signal. And on the left, uh, it selects two color together. So one association from one DC signal to all the TH signal all together. On the bottom, it just fused this association to have the same coefficient. So there is another function, compare types, that allowed us to compare different types. So this took pretty much the same, um, the same matrices than in a trained varicell, but uh, also different types. And here, we plot the mean square error of regression in order to choose uh, the best model. We can also plot um, the best model for each of the types we, sh we choose according to one, one criterion, uh, that there is several criterion. Well, here it's a toy example, so it selects everything, but if you are more complicated uh, models, you have more differences between the different types. 
So to conclude, this is a near package to perform variable selection in multivariate linear model. It can associate explicative variable, it can associate responses, or both explicative variable and responses. Or let all variable free. Then if you have any question, you can come and see the vignette and uh, you can find me somewhere. Thank you. Hello, so I'm Christophe Dutton. I'm uh, actually uh, using R since uh, quite a long time, since 2006, and first contribute to an R package in 2007 for r 2 r and uh, my first package in 2008. So I'm assistant professor at the University of Paris-Dauphine, and I'm going to present uh, a new estimation uh, method for uh, IAD model, so a based uh, parametric model, that it is in implemented in the feed dispute package. So, uh, and feed dispute package actually is, uh, start uh, uh, quite uh, uh, a long time ago, uh, in 2009, at the user conference in Rennes, actually. And uh, since then, there have been uh, many, many uh, versions of uh, feed displays that enhanced uh, the package. And currently, the version is uh, 1.014. Uh, and the main uh, functionality of feed displays is that it extends the feed dis function of um, the mass package that allows uh, uh, to uh, deal with sensor data or to uh, add a new estimation methods and just maximum likelihood. And the new uh, estimation uh, we want to implement is maximum spacing estimation, which is quite old, that we found in the 80s. And currently, there are only two packages uh, on CRM that allow to fit that method and only for a selected number of uh, probability distribution. And uh, you know, in phase diffus, we can fit a large range of uh, probability distribution. So we consider actually a data set that are assumed real value, so we can sort it exactly. And we compute spacing, that is the difference in terms of uh, cumulative distribution given a, a parameter value. And once you have the, the, D, uh, the DI, then you uh, take the log average of, uh, of the spacing and you try to maximize it. And under certain regularity conditions, you can show that the MSC has exactly the same property as a, a maximum likelihood. In the sense, it is unbiased and uh, normally distributed. So if we take a just a simulated example, uh, exponential distribution with a parameter equal to one, uh, in black line, uh, we see the average spacing. We see that the uh, optimum value uh, is reached near the true value, one. Uh, and uh, that the spacing is quite uh, very uh, smooth. And once we, so it's already implemented, so once we plot the uh, output of FIDIST, actually we get the, all the um, uh, automatic uh, plot uh, uh, of that type of object, and so we get the comparison on the density, the cumulative distribution, and the other uh, contact contact plot. And here is another example, not on exponential distribution, but on a Burr distribution, which is a heavy tail distribution, um, quite uh, widely used in actual science. We see that the, uh, we find a quite uh, very good um, estimation, both in terms of uh, CDF. And, the, and if we want to actually assess the uh, potential bias in the estimation, we, we can do the bootstrap put reserve, which is already available in FIDIS Plus. Uh, just by using Buddhist, and actually we can co see uh, how far we are from the true value, which is denoted by the dotted line here. Uh, on a real data set, it can also uh, perform quite well. Uh, so we consider the uh, numerical um, hurricane damage in the United States, which is quite a uh, famous data set, and with, so with hurricane between uh, nine, uh, 900 and, uh, and uh, 2015. And so we, we apply just a single distribution, the bird distribution, with quite, very, quite good fit, between a maximum spacing action and a maximum likelihood. So they are uh, all, quite almost the same, but still they, they, uh, they uh, very uh, good uh, the, the shape of the distribution. And if we compare in terms of the goodness of this statistic, and not just from a graphical point of view, we see that maximum spacing is a little bit better uh, especially for uh, uh, the, the first type of statistic. Uh, yet there are, the differences are very uh, uh, low between the maximum and the key. So in, uh, in short, um, uh, in feed dispute, we implement the new, uh, the new estimation method. Actually, we implement the generalized maximum speculation in the sense that we, you are not forced to use the logarithm 
uh, when you compute the, the average uh, log spacing. And automatically, you get every uh, generic method uh, that uh, are already defined in Fedis Plus uh, for free. And so I, I put in reference the, the main articles on uh, that type of uh, estimation procedure and the three packages I uh, mentioned in my talk. And so uh, I hope you will have some questions after. Hi, everyone. So my name is Marc Choisy. Um, so I'm going to present a package with na the name has changed. It's now named Gamma. We realized that Rama was already taken by a bioconductor package, so we changed the name. So this work I'm going to present has been developed uh, for over the last six months mostly by these people that are listed here. And this is a work uh, financed by the Institute of Research for Development. Um, so we do a lot of um, uh, modeling in epidemiology and in population dynamics. When you want to do modeling, one of the easiest approaches is probably the, the uh, differential equation framework. Uh, for which there already exists a lot of packages in R to do so. Um, but one limitation of this approach is that it's population-based. If you want to, to, to uh, use an individual-based um, approach, you need to use more um, algorithmic approach, such as the Gillespie algorithms, and for which also are, are packages um, available. And a step uh, further in that direction uh, of details is to use agent-based model where you can uh, model each individual of the population as a single object. And uh, so in the um, agent-based modeling has been developed uh, mostly over the, the last uh, two decades. And two of the, 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 the main uh, software and libraries available are NetLogo and Reaper Symphony, which are basically at uh, extremes of the of spectrum of performance and ease of use. And for these two frameworks, uh, there exist uh, packages uh, in R that allows to, to interface it. And even for this one, there is the R, L, and X um, uh, software that's been presented uh, two days ago at the conference. And here we decide to, in our institute, we also develop a, a new simulation platform, which is called Gamma. And it sits between, uh, at, uh, in the middle on, of this uh, spectrum of uh, performance and ease of use. And two key um, aspects of this uh, simulation platform is that it integrates very well with um, um, uh, geographical information systems. So you can make perf uh, simulation in uh, real setups. And also it's, um, it's got uh, its own language to define the models. So you can see the, 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 the URL of that uh, sub, uh, simulation platform. So here the package we, we present is, uh, is um, an interface to that uh, simulation uh, uh, engines to, to be able to define the model in R, to run the simulations, and to, um, and to analyze the simulation output. So this, is a, this slide shows a typical workflow of um, how we work with the, the Gamma package. So you first define your model in, uh, in Gamma. Uh, it's written on a, a simple text file that you load in, uh, in R, and uh, it becomes uh, loaded in, a, in an object of class experiments. From where you can manipulate it, and you can generate uh, uh, sim um, simulation experiment plans. You can run those plans and get the results, and then analyze them, visualize them, do some sensitivity analysis, model calibrations, uh, hypothesis testing, and so on. And the simulation out, uh, outputs are sit in a, in, a, in, a, in a directory. So here is the, the, the class uh, the, of that uh, package, experiment class. It's typically um, a, a, sim a simple data frames, where each row is uh, one single simulation, and each column uh, contains uh, the, the model parameter values, the rates at which you want to uh, observe the, um, the monitored variables here in green, uh, the length of the duration of the simulations. And the last column is a list column that contains data frames of the time series of the observed variables. And that object is linked to uh, the input uh, gamma, file, gamma file that defines the model and to the output directory that contains the simulation output. So here's an example of what you can do to visualize the data. So here you see you're visualizing a time series of an epidemic curve. And here you can see a movie of uh, here is a predator prey in a, in, a, in a landscape. So we made a package down website of that package. So if you want to see more information, go to that URL. And you can also see that we try to develop that package uh, 
uh, in a tidyverse uh, style so that it integrates very well with all the tools from the tidyverse. Uh, we also put a lot of vignettes uh, so that you can uh, uh, see example of applications of that um, uh, package. And also on the Gamma website, you will see there is um, a, a big library of models that have been developed over the last 10 years. So it's an uh, easy start to start your own model. You can take uh, a model in, in the uh, domain and adapt to that. Hello, um, I'm Matthias Keating. This talk is about uh, uh, RCP greedy set cover, which is a, a package for the solution of the set cover problem. Um, yeah, I'm a PhD student at the RWI uh, Institute for Economic Research. Um, I'm going to preface, if you have questions, come to me after the talk, but do it fast, please, <laughs> um, uh, because I don't have a question slide. Um, yeah, the set cover problem is actually a very important problem. Uh, you just you get a, a collection of sets and they cover a universe. That is, you take the union of all the sets and then you get a universe. And what you want to find is the smallest sub-collection of those sets which also cover the universe. So here would be an example. Uh, every row is a set. Um, so you get four sets covering the universe which are the letters A to F. And a desired output would just be to uh, get the sets one and two, which are two sets, uh, and they also cover the universe. So, like I said, this is a very important problem in the field of approximation algorithms, and you can apply it to a lot of other problems. In uh, the application we had, uh, we are tasked in finding the minimal number of hospitals for Germany. So, given that everyone uh, can reach a hospital within 30 minutes. And you can actually solve this analytically, but this is not feasible for large problems, such as uh, in our case. And so there's a greedy approximation available, and this uh, package uh, implements this, this solution. And it's fast because we use RCP and data table. Uh, the actually algorithm is really easy. You basically just always search the largest number of uncovered uh, elements and you put it in the solution, then you mark the rest, those elements as covered, and then you repeat the steps until you get a cover. So this is basically the simplest things you can think of, but you can, it can be shown that this actually has pretty nice uh, theoretical properties. You basically have a bounded approximation error uh, but what you can, what you get in exchange is speed, or in some cases, just the fact that you can actually do it. Um, so uh, in this package, we have a. It consists of a pre-processing step, which we do in data table currently, uh, where you just associate every set and every element with an integer, so you can work with uh, with integers, which is nicer. And the main part is written in C++. And uh, the nice thing is then you have there you have data structures which give you dynamic objects because you have to resize and you have to do objects with string eff efficiently which does not exist in R. And the main workhouse are unordered sets for um, integers. Uh, yeah, just to show our application, this is a data which is based on, uh, this is grid data uh, where every grid point is uh, populated, uh, one kilometer grid in Germany where we have data on. And we um, computed the drive times for all these uh, sets, which are a lot of drive times uh, constrained to uh, the drive times being less than 30 minutes. So if you organize, this is then organized in a two-column data frame, uh, where the first uh, column is always the sets and the second the elements. And this uh, yeah, were more than 100 million rows, so it's not small at least. Um, yeah, and this is the input uh, the package expects. So you just have a two-column data frame. Um, and yeah, as you can see, it uh, takes around five minutes to apply this algorithm. Uh, which was fine for this problem. And the output is exactly as an input. You also get a tidy two-column data frame where the sets are again the first columns and the elements in the second. And yeah, just to do a sanity check, it actually is a, a cover and it worked. Um, yeah, this would be the output. The blue, puts, uh, the blue points, they mark the hospitals. 
um, and yeah, they are nicely distributed in Germany. Um, sometimes not the way uh, you might expect. For example, if you look at Berlin, they are not. They don't put the sets in the, the hospitals in the center, rather at the border. Um, yeah, some some extensions for the future. We actually can speed it up a bit. It currently needs a lot of memory. Uh, I think also I think we can rid, get rid of all dependencies except RCPP. Um, and there are also some other variants of the problems we, which we can extend it to. Yeah. Thank you. I'm Michael Binoir and I will be presenting not one but two packages that are called Gparito and GPGame for multi and many objective Bayesian optimization. And this is a, a joint work with Victor Pichny at uh, Prora. So <clears throat> Bayesian optimization, it's uh, dedicated to solving problem with for black box uh, functions, which are described in the next slide. So we assume that we don't know anything about the function we want to optimize, but we know it's expensive to compute. So we have a very limited budget, and it's supposed to be complex. It's not convex. There are no derivatives. They can be noise. And for this, we need to have a, a limited number of dimensions in, for the design space, and also not that many objectives. Because if you want to solve um, all those objectives at once, in many cases, you cannot find one good solution that solves everything, but you need to make compromises. And you end up trying to find the Pareto front with the, with the set of optimal solutions. And you want to have a good discrete approximation of the set. And what we do globally in those packages is to, uh, we use the second short design strategy called uh, Bayesian optimization, where we use a fast to train surrogate of the objective to predict everywhere. And we try to find the best for points according to a, a criteria that's based on the the objective. We use Gaussian processes for this uh, task because they make very popular surrogates because they provide uh, uncertainty quantification about their predictions and they also have uh, good interpolation capabilities if you need it. And under the hood here we use dice cooking for this. How do we select points? We uh, design acquisition functions and they are based sometimes on the notion of improvement. How do you improve on an existing Pareto front? It can be a max-min distance on existing points. It can be the volume you add to the existing part of front. Or there are also notions of variance or entropy that you can use. So now is a simple example of a B-objective optimization problem. So in red, it's the true part of front on the left and the true part of set on the right. So we start with five, uh, 10 observations. And as you can see, the approximation on the uh, bottom left is not that good. So we start adding first five new points, one by one, and then five more. And as you can see, as we add more points, we get closer and closer to the true Pareto front. So that's uh, really selecting points as best as possible to not waste any observation. And what's good with Gaussian processes is that they provide some post-processing uh, capabilities with their uncertainty quantification capabilities. So for instance, we are able to predict the location of the true Pareto front, even if we don't have observations everywhere. And we can also compute probabilities of non-domination in the input space so that we can have a more um, feedback on the problem. Here is a real test case problem um, that I've worked on. It's uh, 47 design variables, and there are five objectives, the mass of this uh, device, and uh, then uh, lateral impacts on a, on a vehicle. And you can see the results, yeah, or oh, you could see it, and it worked. <clears throat> so the issue with this is that if you take more, more and more objectives, say more than three, then you cannot visualize. Approximating the Pareto front is very difficult. And then as you get more objectives, more and more points are non-dominated, meaning that all your points are optimal. So this is an issue. And to solve this many objective problem, we decided to took um, a step back and go for finding a very good solution in the game theoretic sense. So we look for the kalais morodinsky solution, where from a disagreement point that everybody agrees on, then we can improve all the objective or players with the same amount. So everybody gets the same, at least uh, the same amount of uh, gain from a, a bad solution. And here is an, a calibration problem. So there are 13 variables nine objectives that are the target values and different types of uh, responses. And we want to 
optimize those based on data that we have and on a simulator that takes uh, 30 minutes to run. And we can, so the result is at the bottom where we see that we improve most of the objectives. And um, if you want to specify one more, you can actually do it with preferences. So I've tried to show you that uh, you can solve expensive multi-objective optimization problem with Gparito. You can do it also for many objectives with GPGame. You can actually solve Nash equilibria problems. And there is uh, a lot of uh, examples on these for these grant packages, and there is a journal of statistical software for uh, Gparito. Thank you. Thank you.